that's nice. That's real nice. sitting on the big fire maker. I used the belt sander to make that little notch there, make that a little bit narrower so that it now fits there. Without that little notch it didn't fit. But yeah, a couple seconds on the belt sander fits perfect. After digging around, I was able to find some cables that will work. I got a 200 amp breaker. This inverter is rated for 3000 watts and a 6000 watt surge. And at 12 volts, 200 amps is 2400 watts. So that cuts out before, way before the inverter gets to its limit. But I should be able to run the air conditioner, the freezer, the refrigerator without exceeding that. So these are still to be connected. And the 75 amp battery charger I looked up and the 4 gauge wire that's on these spools should be able to carry that. There was an 80 amp breaker. I guess that's what I'll use for the battery charger and I'll just make up new cables with what's left on these spools and yeah this has worked out just about perfect I saved a ton of money getting a spool of this and the hydraulic crimper and making up my own cables and these other cables these heavy duty ones like I've got here and here those are left over from when the house batteries on the carver were 12 volts and these connected stuff. Probably, probably this inverter, as a matter of fact, was probably connected with these cables. And I know that's one of the jumpers that went through the battery pack to parallel all the 12 volt batteries. I'm going to get out the crimper. I'm going to make a short cable for the positive side that just goes over a little bit to where the breaker can be and then a cable from there to the battery and the ground cable to the battery and at that point I can connect everything I've still got that one cable that's the positive from all the batteries that are below these batteries so I'll have to check the voltage on that and on these bus bars and if they're close enough within a few tenths of a volt I can connect them and that's it that will be it then I plug something in and see if I can work it so on the upper bus bars we have 12.95 volts and on the lower set of batteries we have okay 13.05 so 13 volts 12.95 <laughs> nice very nice so it ought to be safe to connect that and let them equalize a bit. There's probably a very low current going through there. Oh, I just need to hold this here basically so it doesn't short on anything else. For now. Good, good, good. We now have one gigantic battery for the first time with all of these. Well, the air conditioner is quiet for a minute. I can 
I can hold the jaws shut with my finger while tightening this and making sure I don't pinch my finger. That would be bad. Okay. And now I should be holding the lug in the jaws with just enough force to hold it still while I get the wire in there. And now a few more pumps by hand should crush the lug enough to hold the wire, at least temporarily. And then I can get it against the floor. And a few more pumps and the hydraulic starts to harden up. Then I can put my weight into it. one a good pull. Make sure it's crimped well. A piece of heat shrink for each one. Some heat will shrink it. As the name implies. Okay. That's that. Two more cables done. That didn't take long. And I saved a ton of money compared to buying finished cables with the ends already on. And I have made a lot of these cables. It surprised even me how many cables I made. Well, let's see how long was this. This was a hundred foot roll. <laughs> it's almost gone. And there's a roll of red and a roll of black. So yeah, a lot of little jumpers and some longer cables in the carver but yeah that's the way to do that all right I've got a little bit more bare wire there than I did on the others because this goes into the battery charger which goes in and then tightens with a screw. For this I need a straight screwdriver. Everybody's least favorite kind of fastener. Alright. Making sure we get it in the right slot. That's the part I've been afraid of. I get to connect all this stuff. And what happens? I've got some foam blocks that I can wedge in there. And hopefully that stuff won't move around. That should prevent them shifting around too much. Oh, oh that's easy.
Alrighty. I got my mini wrench to hold the nut underneath. Well, the nut up top turns the bolt. The very last connections. Okay, and that's all the electrical connections. Done and done. Yeah, baby. Couple zip ties, cut some holes in the lid, and we are gonna be done. Uh, we'll try that first. It looks half-assed. Maybe it will work. Oof. All right. And it's almost a seat as well. There. And yay! I'm running a light from these batteries. Which I guess means the inverter works. And now I can put this back where I found it. Okay. And that, I guess, is that. Some more of this air conditioner foam just for chafe protection over here. And it almost sort of fits. And that's that. And here we are under here. Got the battery charger and its 80 amp breaker. We got the inverter. Big wires to that. It's 200 amp and breaker and there are the wires coming out from underneath there and yeah I've got this nice flammable cushion right on top of all those heavy-duty wires because I like the excitement and there's my plug so I guess the next thing to do will be to pick a hot day and then unplug from the house and try to run the air conditioner, the freezer, and the refrigerator all off of the batteries and see how long they'll go. Hopefully I'll get 12 hours or so out of that set of batteries. That's the goal. Tune in next time. Will it work? Will I burn my boat down? I should probably tow the boat out in the middle of the street so if it does burn it doesn't take the house with it. Great fun.